Alexa, thank you for having me here today and taking an interest in my art. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Duran Merrill and I paint. I do um, acrylic geometric abstracts, very bold and very colorful. I also do digital photography and I write poetry as well. The particular exhibit at the Paramount um, is a series of my digital photography. Uh, it ranges from everyday objects to beautiful shots of nature to very surrealistic, surrealistic images. What process did you go through to find the name of the title for your collection at Paramount Theatre? Um, it originally started out as Picks and Poems, but then when I was, right at the time you got in touch with me about the possibility of an exhibit, I was working on a book of my photographs and poems. And the cover was a particular photograph uh, that my husband really liked. And on that photograph, it seemed to take on a very shimmery look. And within it, what I realized is the photographs do take on that life of their own. They exhibit feelings, they tell stories. But all those feelings, stories, and emotions are little pieces of my life. They're reflections of my life. And if you look at reflections in nature, reflections in water especially, they have that beautiful shimmering, soft light on them. So it became um, Shimmering Reflections. Which piece was it that inspired the title Shimmering Reflections? And what kind of reflections are you seeing or hearing from others viewing your artwork? Like I was saying before, um, I was preparing a book of my poetry and photographs. Um, I happened to use this particular photograph. And it, it just, the light caught it in just the best way. And if you can see that it's a very soft, shimmering light on it. And like I was saying, in nature, especially water, you get that beautiful soft light on the water and that shimmery reflection. And all my writing and my photography reflects my life, my thoughts, my feelings, what's going on in the world. And I think the lovely thing that I've discovered is that it's not just my feelings, it's not just my thoughts. It encompasses universal feelings of hope, anger, frustration, love, caring. Uh, so it really made me happy and pleased when I share it with other people. And they tell me, my goodness, that's how I felt. It's a beautiful reflection of my life, I think. Do you assemble the figures in your non-landscape photographs? What is your process of creation? I have a very vague idea of what I want to photograph and what feeling I'm trying to reach at the time. So I gather certain objects, and then when I put them together and I arrange them, um, they take on a life of their own. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and then I'll go looking around for different objects and replace them until I'm really satisfied that I'm capturing that essence of the poem or emotion or feeling or experience that I'm trying to get. So it starts out one way, but we never know when it's going to end up where I'm finished. Which poem of yours currently holds the strongest connection with you personally? The one that hurts the most, or perhaps the one that makes you laugh the most? Please share with us that poem and the photograph that it is paired with in your collection. Uh, this is a very difficult question. Uh, there are so many, because like I said before, it, it does reflect my life. It reflects what I see, it reflects what I feel. So it's very difficult. But there's one currently, it came I think because of my age, growing older in this society and how society perceives a person getting older, how sometimes we're not seen any longer. Uh, this is the photograph that I took. I wrote this poem before the photograph, which sometimes also happens. Uh, sometimes the words come before the photo, and then I try to shoot and get the essence of it in the photograph. In this particular one, this doll head has a vacant look, just staring into space, just waiting to disappear. The rose I put next to her, I happen to have. The rose is a symbol of beauty, fading beauty in this case, and she feels the fading beauty of her life. I am disappearing right before my eyes. Gazing into the mirror, I see a fading reflection of who I once was. Can you see me? Am I still there? 
I'm in the middle of my disappearing act, a death-defying act. As I near the final curtain call, my light slowly dimming out, the disappearance complete, what will become of the molecules that were me? Do they dissolve into droplets of vapor floating like a cloud? Will they melt into a warm breath of air? Or will they morph into stardust or moonbeams? Teardrops falling from the sky or grains of sand beneath your feet. Expect no applause, no encore. I am disappearing right before my eyes. Can you see me? Am I still there? Does anybody care? And the photograph, what was lovely about this one also is that I was recently at an event with women of all different ages and they did ask me to read one and I wrote this, uh, I'm sorry, I read this one and I got such intense emotion from a lot of women of all different ages and it was lovely for me to see I'm not the only one, that there are so many of us that feel we don't exist any longer, but we do. Part of me wanting to do this exhibit was to do it now, right now at this age. I am being seen, I am being heard, and I thank you for that.